I just wanted to um, change the title of my presentation a little bit just for clarity and brevity issues. So uh, this is Get, Place and Identity in Leguin's Earth Isaac. Basically, uh, what I'll try to do is uh, try to show you how the different places that Get, uh, this central character of Leguin's work, inhabits during his life affect the evolution of his character, of his identity as an individual. Now, uh, the idea of uh, belonging to a place is something prominent in Le Guin. Uh, she was born and bred in the West. Uh, she was a Western writer, and she wrote from the perspective of a Western woman. And this is something that she states very clearly, and she was very proud of it. Another key issue in her uh, writing, both in her fiction and nonfiction, is the presence of the figure of the other, uh, these individuals who have been uh, pushed to the margins by the ruling hierarchy, and uh, as a consequence, they've been rendered voiceless and powerless. Examples of this figure uh, in the Earthsea saga can be found in the characters of Tenar, uh, Tehanu, and Geth. The thing is that, uh, except for Tenar, uh, the rest have not been studied too in depth, so what I wanted to do today is just focus on one of them, and try to uh, you know, understand and analyze a little bit their otherness, their identity issues. Uh, regarding the scope, the general term or the general uh, theory that uh, we use uh, is the theory proposed by Yi Fu Tuan regarding place and space, regard, uh, regarding the meaning that several uh, you know, geographical areas can develop. And this will be uh, completed by uh, talking about the pastoral, and the so-called uh, middle landscapes. Together with some ideas on hybridity and otherness as proposed by uh, Homi Baba. So uh, what about Getz's otherness? Uh, the sources for his uh, lack of identity, let's say, are twofold. First, there's the geographical uh, reasons, which is where uh, Tuan's theory comes handy. Get is born in Gond, uh, which is this uh, island, uh, this pastoral place in Earthsea, and uh, very quickly, Gaunt will uh, develop into a place because, uh, as you can see, uh, it is the place where his memories and affections reside. It is the place where his childhood is spent. So there's a lot of memories, uh, loads of memories related to that. But most importantly, as uh, I've quoted from Tuan, it is a center of value. It is where meanings reside for him, and it is where he constantly goes back to, to try to find that meaning. Uh, in opposition to this, Roque, which is the uh, place where the school of wizardry uh, is found in Earthsea, uh, represents this idea of space, at least at the beginning, because uh, it offers get this idea of mobility, of being able to go out to meet the world outside. It also offers him this opportunity of perhaps you know meeting other people, uh, meeting other or you know um, visiting other places, or even this idea of abstractness, which means that. Uh, now, in this new space, he will be able to become what he wishes to become, not something that maybe he was predestined to be. Uh, regarding the roles that he uh, fulfills, that he acquires, develops, uh, there is a clash between two roles or identities, which is the initial role or identity of the shepherd, and this other role of archmage, uh, which is somehow uh, imposed on him when he, uh, once he uh, becomes a powerful wizard in, in Roke. Somehow these two uh, identities will clash, and this will mean that the identity of the shepherd will be silenced for a while. This implies that Ged uh, will stand uh, in between both realities and being incapable of relating to any of them. He cannot go back to being a shepherd, because he's the archmage now, but he will never uh, fully uh, somehow relate or settle into this role of archmage. Uh, an another uh, key idea in Tuan's theory is the idea of nostalgia. This idea of uh, the places or, you know, uh, the fact that we are only capable of seeing the value and the meaning of places once we are away from them. And the truth is that episodes of nostalgia, of thinking back to his past, are constant in Get. He's always thinking of, uh, you know, how uh, much better off he was in Gaunt just taking care of a bunch of goats. Yeah. Um, However, his otherness is not uh, comparable to that of other characters in Le Guin's uh, Earthsea. He's much more powerful because, of course, he fulfills this uh, extremely powerful hierarchical role of the Archmage, but also he shows a degree of agency that other characters do not. 
this extremely high uh, degree of agency allows him to decide upon his future. Uh, we can see this in the, uh, in the novel, The Farthest Shore, the third novel of the original trilogy, when after uh, using up his power to try to mend the wrongs made by this uh, evil wizard cop, he sees his power has been spent and he decides that he doesn't want to go back to Rogue, he doesn't want to uh, continue being a wizard, and instead he moves to Gaunt, to his birthplace. Now, uh, we might think that this going back home uh, implies that he will immediately be able to relate to his identity of old, but this is not true. He still finds himself uh, in between two realities, in between the reality of the shepherd and this reality of the wizard, which has been somehow left behind. Uh, those around him see him as a shadow man, no good to anyone, a dead man forced to be alive. It is at this point uh, that his hybrid identity, which means this original mixedness that all of us uh, have within us, uh, comes to the surface. He's first uh, put in contact with his hybrid identity, let's say, at this point. Now, uh, this uh, idea of lacking an identity is said to be also a, a gate to being able to develop an identity of one's own in one's own terms. So one can decide what they want to be. Uh, in Get's case, nature will be central to this development. Uh, now that he uh, is back in Gaunt, uh, he will develop a relationship with nature based on just you know, being with it, of existing in nature, and cooperating with nature. Not just using uh, the power that nature can offer to act uh, in a universal scale, as uh, he did when he was an archmage. Uh, it is also interesting to see that uh, Gaunt, as a pastoral place, uh, this idyllic place, has a lot to offer to him in relation to his identity. Uh, these are ideas taken from uh, the work of Cred Garrard and Marx, and they, uh, for example, they oppose pastoral in relation to these ideas. So pastoral can be uh, or can stand in opposition to civilization, which in Earth is represented by this social uh, epicenter of rogue. Uh, it also offers the individual the stability of nature uh, against the turmoil of the continuous action, action, action of the outer world. Uh, they also stand away from power struggles. In pastoral places, there are no power struggles as there could be, for example, in uh, Rogue, in Earthsea. But most importantly, they offer the individual this uh, opportunity to lead a life of just mere contemplation, mere being and existing. Uh, now, so, uh, little by little, I'm going to jump a little bit through this. Uh, Get will uh, start revisiting these places uh, of his childhood, especially an area uh, in Gaunt called Realbi, which is a mountain area. And he will be able to see how um, these places somehow um, have a meaning in store for him, a meaning that he can relate to, but at the same time, he's also uh, capable of uh, giving meaning to these places. So this, this taking and giving of uh, meaning implies that these places of his childhood, in light of Tuan's theory, will start becoming place again, will start to be concrete places that he can relate to. Uh, also, uh, the, now uh, that he is back in Gaunt, he will take up again this activity of goat herding. Um, and the most important thing that this activity will offer him is the opportunity to be with himself, to be alone up in the mountain, because this will allow him to, uh, this will allow him somehow a time of introspection where he will be able to look inside and you know, ask the questions that need to be asked and somehow obtain the information that he, he needs at this point. Um, so uh, this also implies that um, he will have to somehow cry for himself. There's this idea of grief, and it is through this idea of grief, through uh, trying to cry his past somehow, that he will be able to acknowledge that within himself there's two identities. There's this identity of the shepherd, and there's this identity of the wizard. None of them is evil. They are both good. They're just there, and they make up who he is. Um, uh, yeah, and lastly, basically, um, one key element in this new relationship with nature that Get will develop, and in this road to accepting his hybrid self, will be the idea of work. Uh, this is a quote uh, at the end of the fourth book. Um, by this time, Get is living up in the mountain with 
uh, his partner and a child. And uh, this is the partner's quote. She says, shall we live here? I have money, she said, enough to buy a herd of goats in Turbis winter pasture if it's for sale, if it's still for sale. Get knows where to take them up the mountain summers. So we see how the prospect of being able to work and most importantly being able to work the land are essential for, their, uh, for them staying there first and then second for Get to be finally able to reconcile with himself. Um, and here I would like to uh, include this idea of the middle landscapes. This is something proposed by uh, Leo Marx. Uh, middle landscapes are basically spaces that stand between wild nature and society. And they are uh, places where uh, their society lives in communion with nature. They work the land, but they never pose a threat to, the, uh, to nature. At the same time, as nature uh, is not a threat to them. So there's this kind of harmony, as you can see here, between art, which means uh, work, and nature. It is also interesting to see how, uh, as Carl comments, the American uh, pastoral tradition has this element of work as necessary to establishing an appropriate relationship uh, with nature. And they both uh, agree somehow that uh, the idea of working the land, the idea uh, of you know, existing together in communion with the land, uh, grants the individual this possibility to come out as some, someone new, as someone improved, this kind of renewal or rebirth as you can, ha as you can see here. Yeah? For example, Marx says, a landscape means regeneration to the farmer, representing the possibility of a secular, egalitarian, naturalistic resurrection. So, you know, coming up as someone new. Uh, so, um, basically what um, Get does is, in this road to acceptance and to finding an identity for himself, is he, uh, by going back to his origins, he's able to establish, first, a proper relationship with nature, which, uh, as a consequence, will allow him to accept the different bits and pieces that make up his identity. Um, this is a quote from Tonia Payne, and she says that uh, nature in Le Guin's stories has an impact on the human beings who encounter it and brings them freedom, which is exactly uh, the case of Geth. And I'd like to finish with uh, one quote. So by the end of the Yertsi saga, uh, we can see that Geth, through living a life of simplicity and work, uh, is able to have a happy life He's okay with his identity, he's okay with what he is, with what he has been, and he, he, he can, sorry, uh, live a life of satisfaction. This is a scene right at the end of the last book uh, when Tenar, who's Get's partner, comes back. Um, they are sitting out in the porch, and this is what we can read. Uh, Get looked at Tenar and smiled, the broad, sweet smile that she thought, perhaps strongly, perhaps rightly, nobody but her had ever seen on his face. So we can see Get is a happy person after all, yeah? These are the works I've used, and thanks.